All right, so the CPA exam model rule amendment came out, and so I figured uh, instead of paraphrasing, I would take the uh, immediate release that was directly released from NASBA and just kind of go through it paragraph by paragraph. So we get a better understanding of what the uh, announcement really means, and more importantly, what it does not mean. Uh, at this point, you probably have heard other outlets cover and uh, so what I would like to do at this point is kind of just take a, um, a deeper dive into the actual document to see, uh, like I said, uh, what it means and what it does not mean. So um, uh, it happened on April 21st, but the actual release was on the 24th. Um, the, uh, the, the rule, what it does is it goes into, I mean, it, it starts out with a caveat that it's the first significant change since 2004 when there was the computer-based exam. And this uh, was a big change, obviously, back in 2004 when it switched over from paper to computer. And what it basically says is that the rule as it currently holds is, is that after you pass your first exam, you have 18 months to pass the remaining three section, and they call that the conditioning rule. So when we discuss the rule, the conditioning rule, we're really getting at the current rule as it is. Um, and at this point, the purpose of this change in the rule, uh, based on what their uh, explanation one is, is that obviously disruption is related to the COVID pandemic, uh, reduction of candidates in the pipeline, which essentially is uh, the... Um, uh, the catalyst to all this is is that uh, there's less and less CPA. So if you're taking the CPA exam now, uh, this is the time to do it because the pipeline is uh, drying up. And so uh, usually when that happens, the uh, marketability for CPAs in the future will increase uh, the same. Uh, and that's kind of uh, so the increased workload of firms, I mean, that's kind of, you know, in the interest in providing candidates and firms relief by extending the con the conditioning period. I mean, once again, that's the, uh, when they say conditioning period, they're extending the 18 month rule. Uh, but what I thought was interesting is the concept behind um, the, um, on um, the amendment, what it actually does is it changes it to 30. However, this is just a model rule. And so I think that's important to understand because as you read this, it does not actually uh, change anything as of yet. This all it does is is NASBA has their set of model rules, which most of the um, uh, states uh, or territories will follow. But based on, I mean, and they actually say right here, right, is that the UAA models have no immediate effect on state board rules. So regardless of your state at this point, uh, nothing has actually changed. This is just a change to the model rule. And, you know, it goes further to say that, you know, uniform adoption is encouraged. So you have NASBA telling the states that they encourage the states to adopt this. So, I mean, nobody is going to guess what's going to happen. But obviously, when NASBA encourages, uh, it's a matter of time uh, to see if the states will actually follow or not follow. Um, and so, you know, if they choose to change the rule at a state level, then the actual rule will go in. So, so you hear all you know, that 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 the rule has changed, but the model rule has changed by NASBA. The states have not actually changed the rule yet. Um, with that being said, uh, current exam, and I think this is kind of the whole uh, punchline, right? Current exam candidates remain under the existing rule if and when. Uh, the board in the state that you're in uh, decide to apply and to make said changes. Um, and so it's their, their discretion. They are encouraged by NASBA, but they cannot be required. Um, and, and once again, then they go into uh, some other, this paragraph is kind of giving, uh, trying to, that the purpose of this, right, this comes from the NASBA president, is to give a additional uh, year or the 12 months, right? Because the 18 plus the 12 extra months gives you the 30, the new rule, if you will, um, to provide more flexibility for those seeking the CPA. And so the theory being is if we give you more time to actually get your CPA exam, that you will want to get it. And, and I think there is some validity to that because there's a lot of people, especially during COVID, that got pushed out of the profession because they had 
items that were going on in their life that has that uh, were outside of the norm and so people that lost parts of the exam were disserviced and and so they actually addressed that a little later on uh but i i think it's important to note that uh this does give um in their own words greater latitude to firms and candidates as they negotiate the demands of today's complex career environment, um, end quote. So I, I think that there is a lot to be said on the uh, the thought that went into expanding this, and, and we'll get into that. But it says, in addition, right, recent revisions to the exam. So they, they kind of sneak in a little, um, uh, a little caveat that uh, the score delays may occur when significant updates are made to the exam content and structure. And so my theory here is that they're they're preluding to the fact that when they make the BEC change, there's going to be definitely uh, certain delays with s score scores being released. And, and it's been a hot topic because right on an 18-month window, score release being delayed was important because you only had so much time to sit for the exam. So if that score was delayed an extra month, well, it's a month that you didn't know, should you move on to the next exam? Should you continue studying for this exam? So I, I believe that this kind of takes the pressure off the score uh, being issued appropriately. Um, and so the uh, it serves uh, as a twofold, right, to release some pressure valve uh, the pressure valve that exists, if you will, on the uh, on the score release, and and so this is kind of uh, them alluding to that uh, beforehand. So this way, there's no misconceptions as to the reason why they're doing it, right? And they're, they're saying they support the best interests of the candidate in the journey of entering the profession. Uh, agreed, right? This is a is a is a well um, founded uh, change to the rule. And so over the 60 day comment period that led up to this, right, more than 850 respondents provided input. All right, to the exposure draft, which was issued by NASBA. Um, and um, so it's interesting. So uh, originally, uh, this was meant to only be a six month extension. And then, due to the overwhelming uh, uh, um, information that was brought to their attention uh, of the board uh, from, you know, as they say here, state boards, state societies, CPA firms, CPAs, educators, and students, they uh, they actually um, made that an extra 12 months uh, to make the total now 30. So, uh, you know, it was good work on the uh, profession as a whole to come together to really be able to initiate uh, such a big change, especially on such a tough exam. Um, and then they threw it, a, you know, in my opinion, a little wild card here, right? So these two last sentences um, are uh, kind of uh, showing what's to come, right? So at the same April meeting, the NASBA Board of Directors expressed continued support for the development of a recommended policy for state board consideration that would allow uh, CPA exam candidates who lost credits because of conditions beyond their control, resulting from economic disruptions of the pandemic to come back into the process of completing the exam and obtaining a license, right? So, you know, when I work with, with candidates, the number one thing that, that usually comes up, especially, is that it's a shame when you actually lose credits when you're, um, you know, it's like pouring salt on a wound. Uh, it's hard uh, when you lose a credit to um, to keep your head in the game, so to speak, right? So um, they that's all they mentioned at this point. They didn't go into what that means. So for those that lost credits, I, I'm not sure it's a celebration just yet, uh, but it seems like there's going to be some kind of process. And I think the process is more important here, is that it's not a here, you know, here's your credit back type of thing, but there's going to be a process in place. And so that's kind of what they're uh, alluding to. And then the, the final one, which is, you know, could have been a separate paragraph, but they added it as a separate sentence. The board also discussed developing an additional pathway to allow uh, candidates to achieve, you know, the 150 hour requirement uh, through an academically qualified experience that could allow up to 30 hours of college credit. And so uh, basically, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, discussions that are had uh, even with the candidates that I work with that, you know, they're uh, weighing out the worth of the 150 hour requirement and so you know there's a lot of questions as to if that dissuades uh those from uh joining 
the profession uh, simply because this additional 30. So if if they kind of bridge that a bit, right, and allow an additional path of just having to sit to get your master's to get the 150 credits. So I think that's going to be uh, another big point of, um, you know, uh, moving forward on, on what that looks like. And so it's going to definitely change the way a lot of the institutions um, teach the uh, the material for the exam. And, and if you have more options, once again, options are led to entice. And so we're trying to, to dry up that, uh, that shortage in the pipeline of CPAs coming out. And so, um, you know, that's, that's basically it. I mean, they go, they go into then about NASBA and whatnot, but, um, the, 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 uh, the model rule announcement is, uh, is pretty big and, um, is going to be a, um, definitely a change going forward. So uh, we'll keep you posted on any changes that happen.